All right, this is going to be a sh- I look I look forward I look forward and I love doing this show every day. We've had a morning. Ryan's had a morning already. We're going to have a conversation that I kind of don't want to have to discuss a player that I said I was done discussing. Done betting on that player. We almost did for tonight, but we didn't. You win the game and I still get done not feeling like you won. I asked the Cavs to get a win and blow out the Jazz last night. They did that. Great job. 16 point. You didn't sweat that out. Great job. But yet again, when you look at that box score and you watch that game, I think there is something really wrong with Darius Garland. I don't know the answer to why. I don't know what's going on. I know his head coach tries to defend him. I know... It's not just the box score. It's not just, what do you watch? Okay, yeah, he had, what, eight assists last night. Great job, DG. And I hate doing it because I like Darius Garland. And for a long time, I believed he was an important future piece for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Don't know if I'm quite there anymore. We'll discuss that. We got guards, Bo Naylor, baby, yeah! We get to them coming up. We got them finishing things out in Seattle. Read the tea leaves in the NFL, folks. When it comes back to the stadium stuff, there was a pretty big development that happened yesterday in another NFL city. Could be related to the Browns and their stadium search. We'll get to timeout. We'll get to the morning update. We got the Immaculate Grid. We got it all for you right here on a Wednesday on Big Play. Welcome to the show, everybody. I am Matt Fontana. He is Ryan Tyler. Good morning. Are you all right, Ryan? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm okay. 480 was bad. It was really bad. You now didn't move for to, an hour. I'm trying to make sure the shows, everything's going I appreciate good. you getting here as quick as you could. You and look, it's like, I was like, dude, just, just I think, calm down. I've, we've all been there before. I see it on Twitter. I, I think we're up I on think, YouTube. I think we're golden. Twitch, we're good. We're, we're good. We're golden. Then you get in and your keyboard didn't yeah, work. Man. I mean, so it's been a morning for Ryan. Pours here at Big Play. You know, Ryan got here safely. Shot that out. 480 is Satan's butthole. Like, so I just, there's nothing worse than, over, like, two, like people always debate about what's worse. And I know it depends on the morning commute versus the afternoon commute of 480 and 271 or 480 and 77. They alleviated a lot of that stress over there. But, like, then there's that interchange from, you know, 480 when you get over to well, 176. Here's, here's the, 480 here's the thing, is Matt. the worst highway in Northeast here's Ohio. The, here's the thing was, so I just moved to Hudson, okay? Oh, so you're finding a new route so out, I, too. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily a new route. It's just 10 minutes, 10 to, like, 12 minutes longer. Okay. So I leave my, I left super early because I want to get here a little bit early because I got to prepare for Bruce's show that's coming on later, uh, right after the show we got to tape. And so there was a crash right there before I even, like, basically I saw the moved. scanner, and it was like, and no, so it I'm wasn't sitting there a for crash, tw- right? It was multiple crashes. Well, so no, no, no. So here's the thing. There was one before that that left me 20 minutes and sitting uh, in traffic. I finally got around that. Then I finally get it. onto 271, hop onto 480. As soon as I hop onto 480, another crash. And that was the bad one that had me sitting there stand still for 30 minutes. Dude, I know. I've been in 77. I've been on 9. There's nothing. 480 is hell. 480 sucks. Oh, wait. Here, I got an idea. Let's put a stadium over off of it. <laughs> Write that down. There is no highway. In Northeast Ohio, worse than 480. And you want to put a stadium off by, well, Matt, that's over by, you know, the 77 bridge and everything. Oh, okay, fine. Go over by 71, too. It ain't much better over there, pal. I'm telling you. And you want to put a stadium over there. Well, you know, there's two highways. It'll work. Yeah, okay. All right. Just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. The only thing that kept, me, thing that kept me sane this morning was I had a tweet that blew up, so that made me really happy. I did see that yesterday about 14K. the uh, little Elijah Moore. We'll 14K, get to that. 14K, man. On the um, likes? Yeah, that's my biggest tweet. Nice. Yeah, my biggest Good for tweet, you. Yeah. All right. Check that out. Ryan Tyler 33. You want to know the sad part? Did you pick up a lot of followers because of it? No, that's, that's the thing. That, you don't well, get followers. Welcome to Twitter. I you mean, that, really uh, you know, we do probably. our show here on Twitter and, and all that, but it's like Ryan sent a tweet yesterday. Follow him at Ryan Tyler 33. That here, I'm trying to find it for you. It was classic. Thirteen thousand likes. Elijah Moore on just almost a nonsense. million. So it was Elijah Moore sent a tweet. Remember, thieves don't try to break into empty houses. Next time the devil try you, you are a threat. You are not weak, and no man can tell me different. And then you sent a great, the quarterback. I love my team. I love my team. I love God. Running back. Keep grinding. Tight end tweet. There. And the wide receiver. The wide receiver is always somebody's out to get me. They're the ones that 
you have that friend on social media that you probably went to high school with that's now selling self help books. Self help books. Is Elijah Moore a self help kind of guy? I don't know. Man. Rise and grind, man. But I Today's saw that. the day, Ryan. I saw that tweet. I'm like, oh my god, I gotta go find this meme because that is spot on. You, well, it worked out for you there, did it not? <clears throat> I love it. <laughs> You're like, hey, everybody, come watch me here. Do this. Now, that's, that is the sickness that is social yeah. media here. So I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad everything's all right. I hope everybody in the accident was all right. All right, Matt, out. let's talk about Darius Garland. I don't want to talk about Darius Garland. I'd rather I talk do. about the accidents. I'd rather talk about 480. I'd rather talk about anything but Darius Garland. Because the Cavs got a win of what I asked them to do yesterday, right? What did I say, Ryan? I told you they were going to cover. Yeah, I said, call. smoke the Jazz. They did that. Everybody did. Karis LeVert, the two bigs. What is wrong with Darius Garland? And I've thought about a million questions that I want to ask this morning about where are you at with Darius Garland? Still holding out hope? Starting to get worried? Or get him the hell out of here? And I hate doing that. I don't like asking those questions. The other side of it, I thought about this. Okay. This is one of these like kind of hypothetical, but it's, it's a little, it's semi-based in reality. Would you rather have Darius Garland for the next three years or one more year of Donovan Mitchell? Because that the way is, he's playing right now, well, the that's my is problem. Obvious. Okay, so like, clearly, and that's why I didn't want to necessarily ask that question to the fans this morning. Because does Darius Garland, <sighs> what's wrong? I'm being dead serious. You know, it reminds me, like of, what it, it, something, and if it's yeah. the jaw, and no, if he's see, we now, can't, we can't talk about that dude, anymore. What if he's getting skittish? What well, if that's I, what I'm saying? I, don't I said, know. Draw, like, you can I draw. S- you can draw. Up. You can draw a comparison to something's Deshaun Watson. Up. We talk about all the time. Deshaun Watson isn't necessarily. You know, he came back. Is it a confidence thing? We all kind of think that's a big part of it. Darius Garland, he's clearly afraid to shoot the ball now. I mean, played over 30 minutes, six, this, I, I, six like, shots, whatever it was, six, eight shots. I, I mean, how much of it is confidence? But it's like the fact that he's only taken six shots. So that makes me allude to confidence. But I'm saying, what if the game plan is, yeah, we're taking the ball out of your hands right now. We need you to be a facilitator. We need you to have eight assists, which he did. But like, and I'm not asking for insight into his personal life. It's his personal life for a reason. Something's wrong. The problem is something's wrong. The problem is he's a scoring guard, so it's not like he's just out there, you know, he's a a liability on defense. So then let Karras run the point. That's all, if, no, let if, Donovan if, run the point. Well, so, but when he's out, like, so Donovan yeah. was out last night. We put Donovan in our boost tonight. We assume he's going to return tonight. I have got, did you read this story on ESPN about the, the owner, Matt Ishba versus Dan I listened Dan to Gilbert. it on the fan. Oh I listened to him sound they, off. They were talking about it. We're going to get to it coming so up here in a minute. what's that beef about? Well, we'll talk about it in a okay. second. We'll get to it because I want to talk about it because they're playing the Suns tonight. I assume that Donovan Mitchell will come back. So when he does come back, do I look to Garland and say you're in more in your natural role? A little underlying issue with this Cavs season that's not getting talked about a lot is that that was not a beer. That was a pop or a, a beverage over there for Ryan. You need you, you need a little. Sparkling ice. Oh, yeah. Amazing. There's nothing wrong with Amazing. sparkling ice. A lot of ice. Or a lot of, isn't there a lot of sugar in that? Or is it zero calories? No, this is zero sugar. All right, there you go. There you go. Enjoy it. Here, I'll have my coffee. Everybody have a sip this morning. Ryan needs it. What I was going to say is an underlying issue with the Cavs this morning and overall I don't think they know the system they want to play. Like, when you see some elements of what Evan Mobley has done, some semblance of Donovan Mitchell, and you could say that it's all predicated off the injuries, right? That they can't get a system going. There are some questions about what they're asking their guys to do in the offseason, what they're asking them to come back and be prepared to do. Uh, Darius Garland seems to be uh, caught up in that. What is Darius Garland in this team? Is he a true two? Is he your point guard? Okay, Mitchell got hurt. We got to flip this all around. At the end of the day, this hurts the Cavs any way you slice it. You either had Darius Garland play to a level that he could have played alongside Donovan Mitchell and you would have felt about those two guys running your point, your two, and guard dominant, and you're off to the races. You're not going to run that. This is all on Donovan Mitchell. What are you going to trade Darius Garland for? And I already have people trying to tell me that there's comparisons to the Colin Sexton trade. 
where he was just a piece of a bigger trade. Now, that being said, there is no big trade for the Cavs to make. They literally cannot take on another big contract, even if they trade out Darius Garland. The reason that Darius Garland is probably going to get traded away from the Cavs this offseason is because of the money. So I can't take any back. If I had Darius Garland on a $15 million a year deal, I ain't bitching. Nobody's complaining. The thing is, the guy is on a max deal. It's not the super max. It's not one of the biggest. He's not living up to the contract right now. And whatever that reason is, is it because he got the broken jaw and he's thrown off of his game still from that? Whether his body has not come back. He lost 15 pounds doing that. Something is wrong with Darius Garland. The reason I don't want to have these conversations and I hate doing this is because I like Darius Garland. I think he was going to, I thought at one time he was going to be a big piece of what the Cavs were doing here. And I sit here today saying it's over. And I don't like that. And JB can get angry at me for saying this kind of stuff. You want to know something else? I like JB Bickerstaff a lot. It's over. It's done. I don't call, I don't want to sit here. I'm not even calling for their jobs. If it were truly up to me, both JB and Darius Garland would be here for a long time. You want to know what? It's not up to me. The N- the new NBA CBA has made it impossible for Darius Garland to stick around here. And frankly, I think the Cavs are just going to have to move. I-, I just think that's a matter of fact at this point with JB. I'm not sitting here pounding the table for it. I don't want to have these conversations. I hate it. All right, well, Matt, it's where we're at. We have to. So I'm, I'm posting this Twitter question. Okay, what's the question? How out are you on Darius Garland at this moment? Let's give four answers. What do you want to do for the four choices? Oh, how out are we on Darius Garland? That's an interesting, spicy way to put it. Um, I'm thinking choice one, you want to do like Like a, not at all. Like relax, not at all. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's fine. We can just do three, two. We're going to have to do also Relax, do not at all. I'm thinking, or I'm not sure yet. A little. And completely out. Yeah, I'm out. Yep, I'm out. I'm out. I'm not voting. I refuse to vote. You have to. I'm not. You have to. You know where I'm voting. I, you okay. don't even need me to say it. All right. Don't even need me to say it. Right. You know where I'm at. All right. I don't like doing that. I hate that. Like, and the Cavs have a better idea of, what, bro, it's like, he's getting outplayed by Sam Merrill. He is getting outplayed by Sam Merrill. And I'm not talking about just looking at stats or just shooting. Like, at this point, you're better off just giving Sam Merrill those minutes. What world is that? It's a world where Darius In Garland w- gets to the bench. Like, uh, I, I'm sure that debate, you can't put him on the bench. What are you going to do? Yeah, you can. Why? You can't. Well, What do you mean you can't? He it's- is screwed. He's caught whatever is wrong with him, fixing him, putting him on the bench is going to make things worse. How would that make it worse? It Potentially, if it can't get worse, how could it be worse? Because then you're putting even more pressure on him. See, that's the thing. I understand that. That's the whole debate. Because if it's, if we're talking about it's confidence with Darius Garland, yes. Putting him to the bench is already going to ultimately destroy that. But what at this point, if this whole year is just an audition for De- for Donovan Mitchell to sign this extension, you got to do everything you can but that, to, get, but that's to win a, a playoff facade. series. That's, that's fake. But how is that a facade? That's fake because you're going to see right through it. You're going to see where, th- and in a reality, I actually think the Cavs are still better off starting Darius Garland. Okay, I still so do. If you think they are, then that I think they're the still better off doing that. What I need is, yeah, eventually when Mitchell comes back, I need Karis LeVert to go back to the bench because I love him in that role. Now, granted, last night I went off for 26 and is leading this team, but I like him going back to the bench. And then JB is going to have to figure out what he's going to do late in game. Starting in the NBA is a little overrated. You want to know who's finishing the game out. Yeah, there's something to be said about starting and if you get a foul trouble guy or something like that. Garland, as we know, if he can't score, specifically this, if he is not shooting well, he cannot play. So here's another reason to start him. Get that answer early in the game. Find that out early. I don't need it now. I don't need it next week. But you can't do that in the playoffs, Yes, you can. No, you can't. yes, you can. No, yes, you can. You can't risk dropping a game because you started him. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying in the first quarter. That, but that's if still, he's off on shooting, do that. then start limiting his minutes the rest of the game. You can't do that. Not? You get off to a bad first quarter in the playoffs, you're probably losing. Well, we're probably going to lose anyway. That's the other problem. So why not do something to make our odds better? What would that be? Hiding him? Clay Thompson came him on the bench. bench. It seemed to work. That happened 
way earlier in the season, and they are at completely different spots of their career. Clay Thompson is I almost get that. washed. Sure. Darius Garland, at this point, it's a little fragile. And I understand that the Cavs are at least afforded the opportunity that they can do whatever they want because they probably don't see Darius in the long-term future plans. Is that not weird? a weird statement for me to say? Is that not weird for me to stay and utter the statement, which is now a, almost a fact, the Cavs are operating that Darius Garland is not going to be a part of their future. That sucks. Yeah. I hate that. Well, but the problem is that that they don't need to worry about. Like, I guess here's my point. If you felt like Darius was going to be here for years, you needed to approach this situation a little bit differently. Now, you're like, whatever. To your point, whatever is going to help us win games. I don't know the answer to that, though. I don't know the answer to that question. I hope JB's got an answer. Maybe well, they're saving it for the evidence will show you in this sample size. It's okay. not him starting. The other thing is, it is strictly just on him shooting better. That's it. Well, yeah, it's you just can't, him you can't shooting play defense. better. No kidding. That's what I'm saying. So, start doing that better. To, to back to yeah right that, I know finger. trust me yeah please God you know let's do it the other part about Mitchell is the same thing is he looking at Darius Garland and saying man this guy's really off when I'm not out there but when I am out there we play well together we Even score then. well then it comes back to knowing that if Donovan stays here he knows that Darius is leaving this is what we are staring the barrel down staring down the barrel of by the way great great uh, shine down song is that shine down yeah man, I don't know. Yeah, it's shine down. I think early shine down. You don't fly from the inside. No, that's way early. Yeah, everybody's all. And I'm not ripping shine down, but everybody, you know, they're 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 a little corporate now. They have you know multi tours. Go back 07, I think. Fly from the inside. Shine down. Great song. Anyway, you're staring down the barrel of what we know it's going to be. Darius gone. Donovan saying, and I've said this that even if Donovan signs that extension, there's no guarantee he's actually going to see multiple years of that. If the Cavs are not going in the direction that he feels, he's out of here. It's gone. Moving on. The thing is, you, me, and probably Donovan Mitchell all at one point thought Darius was a part of the solution. And I want this, and I, I want, I would love, I would love nothing more than to have the path and the ability for Darius Garland to be that answer. It's just not there. It's just not there. And I guess when I when I talked about searching for an answer. God, it me, sounds like we're right back on the Browns. Isn't it? There is probably a lot of Darius Garland that he sits down or he lays his head on the pillow at night and he knows he's out of here. He knows. He sees it. His agent. That's operating it. as Donovan Stang. We don't know that. Apparently, Dan Gilbert's confident in that. Okay, well. You know how I felt about him saying that. Would you not operate? Would you not be the betting man? Right? If you went to the Tipico Sportsbook right now and placed the bet of Donovan staying or going. And I, don't, I don't know. Do so you really I... think it's even money both ways? You don't know? Maybe leaning the other way. Really? Really? Based on just the Cavs play. Now, I Isn't counter the whole with, thing. Well, I counter the say when you get a max deal, you don't not sign that. That's a double negative. I understand that. It's really bad English. But I'm just saying, when you get a max deal, you don't pass that up. Because even if things do go bad next year, then Donovan Mitchell will leave. He will ask to be traded, and the Cavs will probably acquiesce to that. Star players get traded when they ask for it. Now, he could also be intrigued on what this future could be, be intrigued on what they could do with the draft picks that they would get back for Darius Garland, all of that. And the thing is, again, it's coming off like me pounding the table and I'm, I, I, I'm trying to throw Darius Garland out of town. It's just a matter of fact. This is where we're at. This is how the CBA is set up. This is how the Cavs are going to have to operate moving forward. Like it or not, Darius Garland is not going to be a member of the Cavaliers next year. So you're calling your shot. I'm saying Donovan Mitchell signing that extension. So and that Garland's goes back to your to point of one year with Donovan or three years with Darius. And it's going to be one year with Donovan. To, at, at that point, prove to him that this is a team that he can win with. That this is a, a group, again, sans Darius Garland with the, with the picks coming back. It's just, that is the fact, that is the, the, it's the reality that we're in. Reality always fun. Real world always fun. That is exactly where we're at. It's because of the new CBA. It's because how things are worked out. And especially, maybe we should be happy. Because now, Ryan, is it not a shadow of a doubt with seeing how Darius Garland, imagine if he was putting up 30-point games and we're sitting there like, crap. 
what are we going to do? You'd be sitting here having the debate. What are you going to do between Garland and Mobley and Allen and, again, putting them next to Donovan Mitchell? If anything, maybe it's good because the question is answered. And that is, I, I kind of started on this. I didn't finish it. That, I think, is the pressure maybe that's on Garland right now, that he just knows, like, this is going bad. There's nothing I can do. This isn't an effort problem. It's going bad. I can't stop it. And I know that I'll probably be playing basketball next year somewhere else. But can you imagine if you would flash back four months ago and I told you that? That's what I'm saying. That makes no sense. Imagine last year. Makes imagine no two years sense. ago when he went to the All-Star game. Derrick Scott was an All-Star. All-Star game. He was there. But he played. It's funny because we talk about all this and it, it, we have to because it's current in the moment. It's what we see. But it all goes back to what if Darius has an amazing first round playoff series. And then we're sitting here saying, wow, can we get more of that? And then you don't I, have a choice. You're not trading I, I him. I see it's the same thing with JB. As a JB supporter and a fan, what? I've already mm. seen things that I've crossed. I've, we've crossed the line of no return, but in you, my opinion. With JB, that's fair. But you think that with Darius already? Yes. Okay. Yes. More so? Dar- yes. But not more so than JB. Because you trade coaches mm. way before you trade a player. Uh, okay. I'm just okay, talking that- about not letting a playoff series. I will not forget some of the things that I've already seen. That comes from, I want JB here, and I'd like, but it's just, again, it, dude, when you give low effort against the Hornets, I'm sorry. I don't think there's any coming back from that. I will fully admit that that is the straw that broke the camel's back. Now, for you, both JB and Darius. No, 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 just JB. Okay. Now, you go to the Eastern Conference Finals, maybe we'll have a different conversation. I will give you that. And I leave that path open. But that was one, again, as a JB supporter, that I was like, you just can't do that. You can't have that. So that aside, where I'm at, same thing. I just, I see these games, specifically when Mitchell has been out, when I am asking Donovan, I'm sorry, Darius Garland to go win me games without your star player, and it's Karis LeVert and Jared Allen that, that have picked that slack up. Well, so even if even if after this year, right, let's just say the year ended, obviously, no matter what, if Darius goes out and has an amazing first-round playoff series, however far we go in the playoffs, if Donovan stays, Darius, you're saying Darius has gone. I just, I, I don't so at that think point, you does have it even matter. Well, yeah, because you want him to play better so you can get some better picks. Trade value, sure, okay. Yeah. I mean, that that's getting a little, like, nitty, you know, into nitpicking a little because you would like to go further in the playoffs. You think he could be a big part of that. He's already paid up. So, I mean, that's the other kind of crappy thing for Darius is, like, there's no future incentive uh, from a monetary standpoint. Like, that is, I, I want to be sympathetic to that. That has got to be a lowly feeling. If he is feeling this way, because this is how I'm feeling, I'm a thousand miles away from the situation, and I can see how it goes. When you go, I got to show up and play my best knowing that it doesn't matter. It doesn't, there's no damn to be given. Because I could go out there and score 70, I'm still probably getting moved this offseason. I could go out there and be one of 10 from the floor, probably still getting moved this offseason. Like, that is a very, and maybe that's me being defeatist on it, and that's not the reality, I just kind of think it is. Like, when you look at, am I wrong on that? Am I wrong for painting the picture that Garland's going to get moved no matter what? I'm not saying you're wrong. It's, that's just hard to fathom, that a guy, no matter how he's so. played. I mean, I don't think so. But then we're going back to, okay, Darius isn't that important. So, But what I'm saying is, but it's also the deal that he signed. To cobble this together, you'd have to give up four guys to make that work. Here you have Garland on this deal. He's not playing well, and you already have a guard. There you go. You're not getting rid of Evan Mobley. You're not, at this point, getting rid of Jared Allen. You need Struess. You're going to need Niang. You're going to need Sam Merrill. You're going to need Greg. Like, it, it's just the Cavs' hands, for better or worse, are completely tied in this situation. There's nothing that they can do. And for those that don't know, what I'm talking about is there's a new CBA. There is a new NBA collective bargaining agreement that has basically outlawed the big three. Not even the big three. You cannot have three players on max contracts. It is so hard. You are penalized so much now. You can do it. It used to be that you would just pay a lot of money and go into the luxury tax. And Dan Gilbert, for as rich as he is, said, yep, you want that check? You want a cashier's check? You want cash? You want quarters? Here you go. And he would pay the league over and over and over and over again. Well, what happened was, 
Other people in the NBA said, that's bull crap, and we need more restrictions. So now there are these aprons. There are these aprons, these tax aprons, with how much money you have on your salary cap. And you can go up to those aprons, and you can go to one, and you can go to two, but eventually it becomes so detrimental that you cannot sign anybody else. You can't use mid-level exceptions. You are so limited on what you do by building the rest of your team that a GM would have a heart attack if they actually had to go up there. If you want to go up there, that's fine. You're only really able to do it for one year. You will pay the piper and you better go have an LA Rams type of win and go win the championship with your built-up team because you are tearing it down the next year because you are so suffocated on everything you can do. All I'm saying is, as it lays out, that is why, moving forward, the Cavaliers will not be able to keep Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, Darius Garland, and Donovan Mitchell on this team. All right, so then I just got to talk myself into that Donovan, Jared Allen, Evan Mobley is a good enough big three. I mean, watch what those guys did last night. No, you're right. Watch I mean, those two, I'm talking about Mobley and if, Allen. If last right? night, if, if Allen and Mobley play together consistently like they did last night, then yeah, absolutely, that's fine. And then you add your shooters. You add some shooters. And... Whatever you, you you're not letting Darius Garland walk out the door either. Let's not act like this is a guy that's that, that is completely unwanted in the NBA. Somebody is going to want Darius Garland, but they also know that the Cavs are in the negative situation in this because they're going to have to. They're they well. Th- wait a minute. Then the money have to add up too. You got to take that salary back. And the NBA is so confusing, man. So they're going to have to find guys that expire and guy. Do Kobe Altman. He's got a job in front of him. He's got a job in front of him. All right, our Twitter question is up. At Matt Fontana's show. Where are you at with Darius Garland? I don't want to, I, I don't even want to utter where I'm at. Relax. You're not out on him all. A little bit. Completely out. Ryan, you know where I voted. Go ahead. Well, I mean, if we're operating in a sense that it's just, it's almost a definitive. I don't mean to try to Donovan sway you on the in. votes. You can do whatever you want. I'm just, I'm just reading it. I'm just well, I would like just theater. like, I mean, I would answer this question. It, like if I could operate in a vacuum, if I knew Donovan was staying, then it'd be completely different. Cause I would be like, yeah, I'm all the way out. Can you operate that way? I don't know. I don't think you so. Tell me. I don't think you I tell can. Me. You tell me. All right. Vote on that at Matt Fontana show. Next thing I wanted to get to, this was a really interesting piece this morning on ESPN. About this, so the Cavs are right back in action tonight against the Suns. We'll get to our boost uh, coming up a little bit with Tipico. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Come on now. Let's go. Come on. I'm assuming Mitchell is back. Is that a wrong assumption? I think I, we're fine. I hope, man. I think we're fine. We're cooked without. Savory. Savory on the points, rebounds, and assists there tonight. I mean, that's easy money for a uh, healthy Donovan Mitchell. So if Dude, he's back. Then. I, I, the reason I put Evan Mobley in there was Kevin Durant. I think Mobley's going to see Durant hit a three, and he's going to come like, all right, all right, let me watch this. Just one. Just one. Come on, Cavs, cover this, baby. Yeah, I'd like to get a win, but if they're going to give you points, a smart man said once said, don't ever not take the points. Take the points, Ryan, but we're still boosted up to a healthy, healthy. Plus 732. Woo! Let's go. Get signed up today. Typico, folks, do it right now. Download the app. Open. I'm already in it because I placed a guards wager 410 this afternoon. Let's go guards. Back in it right here. Typico, folks. Get signed up today. Use that code FONTANA100. New customers. Deposit and bet $25 on whatever you want. You use that code to get $100 in bonus bets. Here we go. There's our bet right there. Boom. Boom. Done. What are you thinking, Ryan? Big 10 spot here? Yeah, I'm going to throw a 10. All right, I'm throwing 10 on it right now. We're up. We're cooked. Bet place in Tipico. Use that code FONTANA100 when you sign up. uh, Terms and conditions apply. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. And enjoy the bonus bets that you get. Again, you just got to deposit and bet $25 as a new customer. You get that $100 in bonus bets. How many people are out there sitting there going, oh, man, I don't have any bets left. I don't have anything going on. Do it. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is a really interesting article that came out this morning. On uh, ESPN. Actually, it came out. I'm sorry. Baxter Holmes put this out yesterday. And this rivalry between Matt Ishbia. Is it Ishbia? I should probably figure that out. And Dan Gilbert. So here's the. I'm going to surmise the whole article. Because it's some stuff that we knew. I don't know the Okay. So Dan Gilbert. Do you know what he made his money doing? Mortgages. Mm, Rocket Mortgage Field. He started Rocket Mortgage. I guess that makes sense. Out of Detroit, Michigan. 
That's where their headquarters are at. He went to Michigan State. He's worth, what, 23 odd some billion dollars doing mortgages, right? Then there's this other guy, Matt, I think, Ishbia. I should really find that out. Matt is just what I'm going to say. With one T, which I always think is interesting. I do two Ts. I don't know where the one comes from. I digress. He also is in the mortgage industry. He also is from a suburb of Detroit, Michigan. And the headquarters of his mortgage company is about 20 miles away from Dan Gilbert's. The only issue, the only difference is they're about like 18 years difference, right? Well, Matt Ishba owns the Phoenix Suns. And I feel really bad. I'm trying to find out the name of his co- United Wholesale Mortgage. He is the CEO and chairman. And he loves this barb. Apparently, they are the largest mortgage company in America with 7,000 employees. They took out a Super Bowl ad to take a shot at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Matt Ishbia took over the Suns a couple of years ago. The first thing that he did was get rid of a $490,000 deal with Rocket Mortgage as an advertiser for the Phoenix Suns. Wow. There is this, it's the rivalry of not only the teams, but their companies, right? Where Rocket Mortgage is obviously very big. I can't tell you I've really ever heard of United Wholesale Mortgage before reading into this, but it's just so many connections. They both went to Michigan State. They're both based out of Michigan, and now they both own basketball teams. Now, the Suns got a win over the Cavs at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse the last time they were here. Do you know who's in attendance in that game? Matt Ishbia. Makes sense. Because he wants to take the shot at Dan Gilbert. Now, tonight, the Cavs are in Phoenix to take on the Suns. I kind of like this. I kind of like it. I'm all for rivalries in sports. And I can only imagine what rivalry exists between billionaires. Now, at the end of the day, you know what Dan Gilbert could slap on the table and say, shut the hell up? He's about four times as more wealthy as Matt Ishbia. Not, I shouldn't say four. I think it's like eight and 24 or something like that. So three times. Anyway, Dan Gilbert's got a lot more money than Matt Ishbia does. So at the end of the day, you can slap that down. So that's where, and I think Dan Gilbert has been like quiet on it. It's it, Ishbia is throwing all this stuff because he wants to take a bite out of Dan Gilbert and he wants to. So this game tonight, there's going to, and, and, and trust me, man. I hope the Cavs know that. I, win it I hope they do, man. Just, I, and I'm not saying they need to read this article, but like, just somehow make sure that that finds that way to the. To, to I think the guys. Dan started printing out the articles and taping them on the visitor okay, locker room this, walls. Okay, this is how. If corporate America, if they were working the way that <laughs> Matt, you think it's this- not Dan Gilbert, it's somebody else <laughs> that works with Dan that just gets that message to Kobe Altman to get that message to JB Bickerstaff. Dan- go, Don't lose this game. You think tonight. Dan's looking at this? Pulls JB aside. JB, you win this game for me. You're coming back next year. Well, I mean, the other, I, I get where you're coming from, but like, it's also if Dan is operating from the power position where he's like, I don't care about this guy. This guy can go to hell. He's the one calling me out all the time. But they're a little rivalry. They're a little barb to be had there, I think, between these two teams. I think my owner be would beat your owner in a fight. Yeah. Here's the funny thing. You know, in Ishbia, when he, when his, um, when he was voted on is being approved to be the new owner of the Suns, there was only one abstinence no in way. voting. Why it well, it's conflict of interest? Well, that's what he probably said. He goes, I can't vote. And it's not like he voted no. He just abstained from the vote. A rivalry here brewing with the Suns. All right, I'm, you I'm know me it. and the Suns, man. I got this thing with them. I don't know why. I watch them play, and I go, they should be a thousand times better than they are. I'm drunk on Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. I don't know why. You know, you can't stand Devin Booker. I get it. There's something about him. He's just, he's he's annoying. Like, the shit he does. Like what? Just like, uh, talking about life or talking about basketball? Like when, he, when he, basketball, like, I remember it started with his beef with Luca. He's just being a little baby. Uh, I mean, yeah. I Again, I'm not a Suns fan by any stretch of the imagination, but I just always keep looking at them and I'm like, ah, you know, they're better. They're better. They should be better. I don't know. You want to go uh, NBA power rankings real quick from ESPN? These are sure. fresh. They came out, like, five. A minute ago. Wait, who's rankings? ESPNs. Okay, because CBS, remember, yesterday had him at 16. Right. You want to know where the Cavs are at? Yeah. All right, number one, Boston Celtics. Properly so. Nuggets, two. Oklahoma City is three. They had Oklahoma City as the one team on CBS yesterday. 
Minnesota 4, Dallas 5, Milwaukee 6, Clippers 7, Pelicans 8, Knicks 9, Suns 10. Shows you how they feel about the East. Cleveland Cavaliers 11. Right up here from Dave McMenamin. Cavs were up and down last week, losing to the selling uh, seller-dwelling Hornets, getting blown up by the Nuggets, and then stabilizing with wins against Philly and Utah. But the biggest news of the week was Donovan Mitchell's future with the franchise. When Dan Gilbert told the Associated Press, we think he will... Wait a minute. McMenamin quoted that as saying, we think he will extend. I thought he said he was confident that he was going to extend. Those are two different statements, man. Let me pull it up. I'll find it. No, I'm almost positive that that's what he said to Tom. That he was confident. Now, I'm not ripping Dave McMenamin. But if he's saying that Dan said... We think he will extend. Those are two different statements, man. Go, yeah, D- D- Dan Gilbert, associate. What, even if you Google that, I'm sure it'll come up. He said it to Tom. Search Tom with his hand. This says, quote, well, from KSL Sports, quote, we think he will extend. That, mm, mm, that's not what was said, I thought. Google Dan Gilbert confident. Well, I'm pulling up the AP article. Yeah. It says we think you will. Confident. Care. That's what he said. Confident. So that th- th- tell me that those two, are, oh, I think, and I'm confident. Those are two different statements. Man. Yeah, absolutely. He said he was confident. That's a little bit different. But anyway, I digress. Um, Mitchell was noncommittal and, and didn't comment when reporters asked him on Friday. I'll handle it when it comes. Okay, so that's Dave's right up. I mean, there's nothing really there about the Cavs on that. So you got Phoenix tonight. You got the Lakers coming up and then the Clippers. You got the back-to-back again. So you had a back-to-back. You were in Utah last night. You got Phoenix tonight. Then you get two days off, and then yeah, you got to go Lakers-Clippers back-to-back. This NBA scheduling sucks. I don't know why. And I think it's like, you know, the hell stretch that we just went through. Is it the tournament? Is it the in-season tournament that's screwing this up? Why is the NBA schedule seem so messed up? Maybe it's just the Cavs? I don't know. A lot of back-to-backs. They're trying to cram this crap in. I don't know. I have no idea. 11, I think that's fair. uh, Orlando is 12, Sacramento 13, Lakers 14, Pacers 15. So, again, we talk about standings. The Bucs losing? Yeah, we're one and a half now. Back from the two. Can you imagine we ended up? I that? said that on ESPN Radio last weekend about the Cavs still fighting for the two. My co-host called me crazy. He goes, "You guys better worry about the three. I'm like, eh, "Let's not put too much on Milwaukee there just yet." So glad they went with Doc Rivers. Really working out there well for the Bucks. Yeah, man. Yeah, it is what it is. So, little rivalry game tonight. I love our boost. Get on it with Tipico and get ready to go. Want to flip over to the NFL for a little bit? I got a mock. Is it Field Yates? Yes. I saw it this morning. I didn't look at it. Though. I don't look at it. Right as I was about to, because I was in standstill it. traffic, I was about to read it, and then boom, we started moving. So, no, okay. right. so we'll get to that in a little bit. I want to bring up another story that is actually very impactful for what's going on here in Cleveland with the stadium because the Chiefs. And I guess to the lesser extent, the Royals found out yesterday that their tax, their sales tax levy failed yesterday. So I want to I want to preface this whole situation for those that don't know what's going on with the Kansas City Chiefs and to a lesser extent, the Kansas City Royals. So the Chiefs have been in Kansas City since 1963. And for the first time since then. There is a chance that they could be on the move, not necessarily out of the area, but maybe out of the county. So they had a sales tax proposal that would have been used to help for major renovations at Arrowhead Stadium and also to build a brand new downtown stadium for the Kansas City Royals. Instead, they will now have to look for financial help elsewhere. The sales tax that is currently in place runs through 2031. They were going to extend it through 2064, Ryan, I probably won't even be alive in 20. I, well, I hope I am. Yeah, you will. I hope You'd so. be what? That's in You'd be like 40, 70 literally, that's 40 years from now. I will be 74. That is. Yeah, it's about, I think the average is for males, like 75, 76. I don't know if I'm making it, man. I really don't. <laughs> Start in the treadmill, man. I the don't. Peloton. Can't even work out anymore. Kids, job stress. Oh, I don't know if I'm making it. Anyway, I digress. So I'm assuming that that money, they know the future would be there. They could probably get some, I don't know, whatever. Here's the interesting thing. It wasn't even close. It got shot down 58 to 42. 
78,300 people voted against it. 56,000 people voted for it. You're talking about a 20,000 swing, which the other interesting thing, and I'm just shooting from the hip on this. Think about that. I'm bad at math, but indulge me for a second here. 78,000. I'm just going to call it 78,000 and change. 78,000 plus, I'll give you 57. It's 135,000 people. I feel like that's how many of those two arenas could hold. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like you couldn't even get two. I'll put it this way. Two sellouts between the Royals and the Chiefs. Not even that amount of people voted on this. And I don't know the Democrat. I don't know the census. I don't know how many people live in, in Kansas City or Jackson County, Missouri, which is where this all took place. But they couldn't get it done. Why is this important to the Browns? That's the Kansas City freaking Chiefs. They are the dynasty of all dynasties right now. And their people aren't voting for a tax levy, for renovations. Mm -hmm. They're not getting a new arrowhead. They just need renovations done. Now, they did, you know, pile on the Royals. And I know that they've been lowly and they've been really bad. And maybe those are people, I ain't voting for them to get a new arena they don't deserve, or a new ballpark. They don't deserve it, right? But think about that. You have the number one team in football. There's no point in even debating that. With star players, and you can't renovate their stadium for them? And Taylor Swift. So when it comes back to Cleveland, which is why the Dome, which I know people are all on and they think it's happening in Brook Park, I go, this is not just a snap of the finger thing. This isn't as easy as a lot of people think. What is the easiest thing to do? Renovate the new or renovate the stadium. It's the cheapest option. It's the less impact. People just think it's so easy. Like, all right, I just pass it. We're going to just go to Burke Park. That's fine. No, no. The Chiefs are asking for the bottom barrel and they couldn't get it done. And I know Browns fans are as loyal as Chiefs fans are. Put that to a vote. How do you think that vote would go? We kind of did it on our show yesterday. If you put it out to a vote of the people on how they want their tax dollars to go or where it's going to go, bro, if we can't get the Chiefs done here, what makes you think the Browns are going to get it done? I don't know how close Clark Hunt is to his family, but I was looking up the, uh, his family net worth, not him personally. Yeah. $24.8 billion. Well, I mean, that's the other thing. People complain, just pay for your own money. We're paying for season tickets. We're paying all that money. I understand it all. The other thing I was actually reading this morning a little bit, which was also interesting, uh, Cleveland.com. And they had a whole article about school levies failing and how the percentage of school levies can't even pass. They brought it up because of home valuations. Dude, taxes are through the yeah, ass right now because everybody's house value is going up. You got to pay more taxes. So when you see a tax levy for a school that either A, you don't have kids that go to, or B, you already pay for your kids to go to school, they're like, no. Now, that is something, would you not always and forever vote for a school levy? Why would you not want strong schools wherever you live? That is struggling. It's because it's because the same reason that people don't want can't student loan to get canceled because they're like, oh, I had to pay it, so these kids should have to pay. Yeah, it. that's it's, yeah, it's, that, it, yeah. I understand it, but that's, it's, but that's then it's sad. a cycle yeah. that it's a sad cycle that perpetuates. One hundred percent. So that's what I'm. You you can't get schools funded. You can't get the Chiefs to get a new place, and people just think that the Browns are going to walk into a new stadium down there. I don't know, but it's w these are things that you got to keep your eye on. Because what I'm hoping that the Browns in the city of Cleveland can find out what went wrong there. Was it too much money? Was it a sales tax? Versus a, like, Learn and figure all that out. Because you're entering what I think could be some treacherous water here, man. I think you're entering the real crunch time of trying to find out what is actually going to happen with this football team. And you look to see, again, the Kansas City Chiefs can't even money to renovate their own stadium, man. That's crazy. I think that is absolutely crazy. But where are we at as a society? Where are we at as a, as a country, as an economy? All this. Everybody says, what? Well, recession's coming again, man. Everything is more expensive. And wages are still down. The rich get, what is it? Again, the middle class people like you and me sitting out there can't find a bone. Takes money to make money. I know. I get that. But we're sitting out there, and then that's I, and that's, I completely understand. People that work a lot harder than I do. Sit here and host the show every day. There are people out there working hard, making their money, and you got billionaires coming to ask for a little piece of it. I get it. I completely understand it. I do. Price paying the game, though. You know, you want that team in this town? 
I wish there was some way that you would be able to tax Browns fans instead know. of everybody else. No, be, right? Yeah. If you're a fan of the team, if you're actually, but the problem, you know how you do that? You jack tick, ticket prices through the roof. You jack parking through the roof and all that other kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I look at it from this. Just as the city of Cleveland, the Browns downtown are good. There's money to be spent. There's hotels that are rented up. Even just with the games coming to town, do you know how many people get work because of the games that come to town? I'm not talking about just vendors and ticket people and the hospitality people. I'm talking about when CBS comes to town, they got to rent out hotel rooms for people. Their trucks come through here and they stop and they fill up with gas. There are planes that land here because of the team, because like just all that stuff. Anybody saying it adds up to pennies, but I still think it's important. I Let, do. Let's just have a solar eclipse every week. Well, people are All freaking the people out. people flock here, we'd make money. Apparently, we are going to lose, like, solar power. You know what I mean? Like, the sun's going to be gone for however long time that is. And then watch. It's going to be cloudy as hell on Monday. Is it not? I don't I know, I think it's man. supposed to be cloudy. You got all these people driving in and flying in from all over the place. It's going to be... It's supposed to be tornadoes yesterday. I didn't see one. I know. I saw Ray Fox tweet. JB. Yeah, it's bull crap, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, is that not the better thing to do is to tell people, hey, prepare for a tornado, no, then there isn't one, I guess? Absolutely. So, meteorologists and NFL head coaches. Just got to try to bat 500. That's it. That's it. Just get some calls right, some calls wrong. All right, Ryan, you have not clicked on it this morning. Let's get you at Field Yates. Two-round mock draft. I'm going to make you sweat. We start at the top here. Number one, Caleb Williams. We're not even looking at that. Number two, Jaden Daniels, Commanders. Number three, Drake May, Patriots. Number four, Marvin Harrison Jr., Arizona Cardinals. At number five, projected trade. Oh, God. Broncos? No. Vikings? Vikings. J.J. McCarthy? J.J. McCarthy. They move up. Vikings get five from the Chargers, who will move back, which, by the way, everybody is on this Chargers moving back thing. Everybody's yeah. screaming that they're going to move back. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. He says the Vikings send 11 and 23 and a first rounder next year. Yeah, you do that 100%. If you're the Chargers, hell yeah, you yeah. do. And they move up to take J.J. McCarthy. Here's Field Yates' write-up. Minnesota would be betting on McCarthy's combination of very good ball placement and mobility to help him become the long-term answer with Sam Darnold in tow for 2024. If McCarthy needs time to get his feet wet, you go ahead and throw Darnold out there. Supporting cast of Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, and TJ Hawkinson with an elite offensive tackle duo should give McCarthy a serious shot for early success. They are built. They're ready to go. I just don't know about J.J. McCarthy, man. Uh, Giants uh, snag Malik Neighbors at six. Alt that offensive lineman goes seven. Dallas Turner from Alabama, the edge rusher, goes eight. Rome goes nine to the Bears. Bowers goes ten to the Jets. See, that's where it gets dicey though, because I think at the Chargers eleven, they would oh they have would to get love a, Brock Bowers. That's what I'm saying. They would have to get a Dunes or Brock Bowers. I feel like they'd well, be really pissed. If they, they also they really need offensive line help, and they am taking Latham out of at Alabama offensive tackle there. Bo Nix twelve to the Broncos. I think they'd be pretty happy with that. But if you're the Chargers, you man, there. I don't know, man. I understand you got to protect Herbert, but you have nobody for him to throw to. Yeah, I'd start with the offensive line though. <laughs> I'd start with the offensive line. That's just me. I get it. They've traded everybody away. Big step back year, I think. All right. We get to round two. 34, Patriots, wide receiver. Go to hell. Xavier Leggett. Oh, oh, okay. South Carolina. I thought you were going to say my boy. Is he still on the board? Number 36, Las Vegas Raiders. Quarterback. Michael Penix. Michael Penix Jr. I like that a little bit there. Number 38. Carolina Panthers move up with the Tennessee Titans to take wide receiver. Ricky Pearsall, Florida. Still alive. The dream's still alive. Number 40, Washington. Keon Coleman, wide receiver, Florida State. That's interesting. Do they really need a wide receiver? I mean, you got Dotson and McLaurin still. I don't know if they that's their big need. Although Number I don't know they took it the first 46, yep. Indianapolis Colts. Wide receiver, Lad McCocky. Damn it. Him and Pittman, bro, with Anthony Richardson. I love that Colts coach Shane Steichen redefined Michael Pittman's usage last season by featuring him a lot in the screen game. It's easy to envision a speedy Lad McConkey, a great run-after-the-catch guy, thriving in a similar concept under Steichen Boo. in Indianapolis. 
Boo. For those that don't know, Ryan really wants Lad McConkey. I scroll down to number 54, Cleveland Browns select. What position? Tell me what position. Yes. Why would I have that reaction? Linebacker? No. Defensive tackle? No. Uh, offensive tackle? Uh, running back? Trey Benson. Running oh, back. Absolutely Florida not. State. Well, that'll signal something. Well, that running back. Our fir- By the way, that's the first running back off the board at 54. Field right. Benson would have a chance for a massive role uh, as Nick Chubb's availability is unclear to start the season. Jerome Ford was solid but not spectacular filling in. Not at 54, man. Not at 54. So here's where we're at. Of the receivers, Rome Wilson is gone too. Lad McConkey is gone. Here are the guys that are still available. Um, Malachi Corley. Oh, I would like that. Yeah, he goes 59. Troy Franklin. Troy Franklin and Jalen Polk out of Washington. All receivers that are still available when the Browns pick. He's got Troy Franklin going 64 to the Chiefs. He's got Polk going 61 to the Lions. And then he's got Malachi Corley going 59 to the Texans. Browns pick 54. I just When you stare down those guys, I don't see a running back. And it's either Benson or Brooks out of, out of Texas, but like, no. And I get, and am I, am I jaded about thinking that Nick Chubb is going to come back? I just wouldn't draft a guy until I really know. Now, how I feel on 54, I'm really starting to believe, at that point, trade back. Trade back a few, I don't know. I'm starting to think more trade back for the Browns. You got to acquire some more picks in this one. But if you're not, take another wide receiver. But the Browns are built to this point. They are almost best player available. And I always laugh when people bitch at me about, you know, it always is the best player available. No, it's the best player available for your team. You're not drafting a quarterback there. Okay. Really, I could see almost any other position. Like, yeah, wide receiver, uh, edge rusher, linebacker, corner. The one that I really do not see is a running back there. And I'm not putting all this on Naheem Hines and uh, 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 Deontay Foreman and and Jerome Ford. And you still got Pierce Strong. I mean, he meant. I know, and you're going me. get you're gonna get Nick Chubb back. I think it's a miss. I think that some of these guys are missing it here with the Browns. I get the easy comparison. You're gonna be without Nick Chubb. Well, you better just draft another running back. I don't think it's that easy. I don't think it's. I, I really don't think that's reality either. You go the committee thing, which I know people are always get a little upset on the running back by committee and see how that works out. Bro, I played out this year. Now, at the end of this year, when you get your first round picks back, I'm sorry, I haven't looked at the 2025 class of, of running backs for the draft. But sure, like John Henderson. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. 100 percent At that point, and we all know the fears everybody has about running backs anyway. Running back is just now seems to be a position that, yeah, I'm not drafting anybody anywhere. Yeah. Think about all the high drafted running backs. They're all out of jobs. Except Jonathan Taylor. I was out of jobs relative, but moved on from their team. And I like, dude, I, uh, he wasn't even a first-round pick. I wanted Jonathan Taylor bad, man. I, I know we had Nick Chubb, and that was the height of Nick Chubb. There's something about Jonathan Taylor I really liked. And it, it's worked out. But I'm just saying, you get guys in the second round, you get guys later in the draft. I guess second round is here. I not now. Yeah, I'm not. not I'm not, 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 not fine. Not, 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 not now. I mean, and also, I, I, I mean, I'm fine with them passing on a receiver. I mean, you can only. There's only so many targets to go around. You still got Elijah Moore, who you're gonna use. You traded a second for him. You obviously traded for Judy, and then you still have Cedric Tillman, which I'm in, very intrigued to see how they employ him. And there's some other guards that are still there. The Beatty kid would still be there. The kid out of uh, 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 UConn, the Christian Haynes. He goes to the next pick. Beatty goes a couple of picks after that. Then you get Malachi Corley. Mason Smith, defensive tackle at LSU, Polk. I don't see it. I just don't see it. Trey Benson, running back. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. We'll discuss that coming up a little bit. All right, let's get to the morning update. Ryan's got the stories you got to know. Hour two, we'll get to the grid. We've got our time up. we got more coming up with the Cavs. I do want to revisit our Twitter question as well. Garland, trending on Twitter for me, Ryan. I wonder what the people say. You think our tweet's going to show up in that? Probably. By God. I might, one of my tweets shows up from a couple of days ago, from a while ago at this point. But there it is. All right, let's catch our break. Coming on back, we'll tell you more about Typical. We'll do our Cavs boost as well. Wednesday right here on Big Play. We got Bruce later today, right? Yes, a little bit do. of bonus time with Bruce. Did you also see the announcement on Big Play Cincinnati? Yeah. They're doing a crossover I event. That. I saw that. 
is they're going to have Andrew Fox Miller. So Andrew Fox Miller and James Rapine host Enter the Jungle on Tuesdays, all Bengals talk. Well, our newest show is Big Play Cincinnati, and that was with Drew Garrison and the Bengalorian, and they're going to do a little crossover event. They're going to have Andrew Fox Miller coming on in. We had a lot of crossover stuff. We got a lot of stuff going on right here, Big Play. Folks, check us out, bigplay.com. Follow us on Twitter. We're up on Instagram as well, Big Play CLE, another account that you can follow for just the Cleveland shows. What else did you need? Josh Cribbs last night. How's the dating thing going? Good? Uh, uh, off yeah. to an early start? Man, they're going, when I tell you they're going all in on it, they're going all in on it. I just got told they're hiring like a correspondent to like go around a college campus. With, Maria's getting a fat head of me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. That's what goes on in the return on Tuesday nights with Josh Maria Cribbs trying to find some love for Ryan there. So let's see how that works out. We got it all for you, folks. Big play, bigplay.com, and of course on the all the social media platforms there. Big play C L E. Morning update, plenty to come. Hour two upon us. Stay with us. Fontana show. Well, how do they know I'm doing this? Did somebody leak this out? It's social media. Oh. It's just, that's the way social media oh. works now. I thought maybe you were just running that yep, 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 yep. Welcome to Big Play, a sports media team that started back in 2014, and now we're not in a garage. Look at us, incorporating some of Cleveland's favorite sports personalities, bringing you fun and compelling content from downtown Cleveland. Coming to you live from the shores of Lake Erie in Burke Lakefront Airport, join Team Big Play for all the best sports talk in Ohio. Check us out on social media at Big Play, bringing you fun and compelling content from downtown Cleveland. Anthony Schlegel, just how physical he was. You know, we saw, we saw the, the girth and the power and everything he was bringing to the table, especially when he was a nice, beefy 255 playing middle linebacker. We were called soft last year. You don't want to be soft, especially when you come to the playoffs. So that's going to be a process throughout this season of establishing us as a harder team here in the How does an Ohioan build the perfect parlay? Who's got something? Big guys looking for long odds. The kids in Columbus are covering better than anyone. And at even odds. If it's even, I'm leaving. Listen, our championship DVD starts today. All right? Dude, I just got an invite to a Cincy playoff watch party. Shut up. Cincy, State, Cleveland, the perfect parlay. I'm a genius. For the best odds on Ohio sports, bet with your cojones. It is Spanish, dummy. Bet with typical sportsbook. I don't buy into this nonsense, this conspiracy nonsense that he's got his money and he's dogging it. He, that's ridiculous. Show about through it. Ryan's got the stories for your Wednesday. A lot going on. Getting geared up for the final four this weekend. Men's and, of course, the women's here. I'm really starting to feel that swell, man. I really feel like it's going to be a huge weekend here in Cleveland. It's going to be a lot of fun. Caitlin Clark and crew, South Carolina. I think I'm pulling for Caitlin Clark. I'd like to see an upset, though. Paige Beckers, man, that'd be a fun thing there, UConn. 
She's special. Would we? Do you feel like we would be robbed if you didn't get Iowa South Carolina this weekend over, no, there, I don't over care. Rock Mortgage? You I'm really? Fine are, with, I'm you're fine you're any of it? Okay. okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, we'll get to all that stories. You got to know, Ryan. Please take it away. Alrighty. Well, the Guardians even the series against the Mariners yesterday. They win five to two. Bo Naylor goes yard yes. as well as Shane Bieber with another gem. He goes six inning. Matt nine strikeouts, zero earned runs. Dude, the Biebs, Biebs is back. Man. Woo. I know the inevitability that people feel like when he's going to get traded. I just hope not hope there's an extension there. I don't know. Does he want to? You would think if you're Bieber, you want to hit free agency. Do you not? If you're like back to doing what you're doing, do you follow Pitching Ninja? No. You know that Rob Freeman guy? So he does stuff uh, with, with uh, FanDuel, and he'll, he'll tweet out things like, you know, he likes this pitcher prop and all that kind of stuff. The other thing that he'll do is he kind of really breaks down – like pitching. That's why I call him Pitching Ninja. And one of the things that he tweeted about Bieber, I want to see if I can find it here, it's just on my timeline, was an overlay. And what it is, is a video of Bieber throwing his fastball and throwing his slider. And the whole point that they're bringing up is that he seems to be back. Like, I'll surmise it from this. The fastball and the slider look the same about three quarters of the way to the plate call that tunneling and one goes this way and the other one kind of cuts in as a good fastball I'm going to sum it up by saying Bieber seems to be back and I know people are freaking out about the velocity and stuff like dude if you can have a seven to eight mile an hour difference on your pitches whether it's your slider your changeup, and your fastball doesn't matter how throw your, how fast you're throwing your fastball if you can have that big of a difference with command you can be an effective starting pitcher in the in, in, in major league baseball so with that Knowing that, you know, Bieber's still pumping it in there 92. He's still getting it up there in the mid, you know, low 90s. I'll take that, man. What happens to him? I don't know. The bats again last night. Bo Naylor, Brennan getting a couple of hits, which was nice. Um, keep hitting, man. Just keep hitting. Whatever, whatever the Mariners are or aren't, you, 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 you outduel them on their aces there. This afternoon, Logan Allen, man. I want to see what he's got tonight. I want to see what he's got. You slapped Castillo around for 10 hits, four runs in that game last night. I'll continue to say I'm just happy about the bats. I want the bats to keep going while I still look at a, bit, a little bit of Bieber. I like it. Uh, Classy with his second save already this season. Let's go. Good stuff out of the guards. I loved it. Cavaliers. I did not love, I did not love 940 start time. That was, that was yeah, late. well, the Cavs are 10 o'clock tonight, speaking of. But the Cavs bounce back as they beat the Utah Jazz last night. I, now I, another yeah, test on yeah, national television yeah, as they yeah. take on the Phoenix Suns. 10 o'clock tip-off. Uh, our boost is up. Tipico, check it out. Three legs. We need total points, rebounds, and assists for, Dar or for Donovan Mitchell. We need one Evan Mobley. Three, and the Cavs to cover five and a half. It is a healthy plus 700 there on Tipico. Yes, Download sir. the app. Use the code FONTANA100 when you sign up. Get $100 in bonus bets when you deposit and bet $25. Terms, conditions, apply. Gambling problem. Please call 1-800-GAMBLING. They did what I asked. I don't care. The Jazz suck, and I'm upset that Darius Garland did not have a good game. You won that game again because of Karis LeVert. You won that game again because of Evan Mobley and uh, uh, Jared Allen. Even Sam Merrill, man. Something's up with Darius Garland. Something is not right with Garland, his headspace, what he's playing. I, I don't even know. Is it the system? Is he not comfortable doing this? Is he just aw I don't know. It's it's a bad spot right now. It, it's not Garland is not in a good spot, and the sad part is this is the worst time of the year for him to be in a bad spot for a lot of different reasons. I hope he can get out of it. I don't know. They need him to in the worst way. They do. Well, the NBA saw a superstar return last night and won Joel Embiid. He drops 24 points in a victory over the Oklahoma City Thunder men, and I think Joel Embiid made his return maybe a little bit earlier than you would have thought. Any of us. I thought he might be out till last week. I mean, Grant, there's only, what, 11 days left of the season, but I didn't even know if he'd come back. Are you worried about the 76ers? You gotta be. So right now, would it not be the Magic for us or the Pacers? Uh, if it ended today, we would get the Pacers by a game and a half over the Knicks and the Magic. 70, I'll put it this way. I Do you assume we're going to stay in the two seed? Or I'm uh, sorry, in the three seed? Here's my whole point. It actually would be better yeah. to stay in the three because if you do, you eliminate the possibility of the 76ers if they stay in the play-in tournament. Let's break this down real quick. Celtics are done. They're the number one seed, and they'll get the lowest seed coming out of the playing tournament. Okay, right? Here are your playing tournament games. 
Heat 76ers. Who would you take there? Uh, with Joel Philly. They would then play Milwaukee. And then uh, Bulls, Hawks, winner of that. I'd say like the Hawks. Okay. And then or Hawks. I would take the, I'm sorry. I would take the Bulls. I would like to play the Hawks if it came to it. Okay. And then the Bulls, Miami, probably taking Miami, right? Sure. Okay. So then it would be Miami, Boston in your opening round matchup. Cavs would then play the Pacers. We are a game and a half back of Milwaukee. You are a game and a half up on Orlando for four. Miami is two and a half games away from the Pacers. So here's what I think you need to do. Stay at the three seed. And it's crazy because you want to get all wrapped up in the two seed and that kind of stuff. I would much rather play the Pacers in a seven-game series than the 76ers. I would agree. So then you got to stay where you're at and you hope that Philly doesn't get, win those games to move up past Miami and eventually Indiana. You got a two-game cushion there and you got a game and a half to make up. Just win your games. Hopefully everything will solve itself out. Milwaukee scuffling again. But I, I really do like where the Cavs are at right now. Alrighty, Matt. Well, last night we got the news that Kansas City, the residents of Jackson County, Missouri, resoundedly voted down a sales tax measure that would have helped to fund a new downtown ballpark, along with major renovations to Arrowhead Stadium, home of the Chiefs, Matt. And earlier on the show, if they missed it, you brought this back to how it relates to our Cleveland Browns. It does. The Chiefs are the best team in football. They're the dynasty right now, and they're having trouble funding a renovation of their stadium. Where do the Browns sit, right? And it doesn't... Kansas City is a little more forthright where the Chiefs have basically said, yeah, we'll leave. Does that mean going to another state? I don't think so. But if they're already threatening that and they can't get a sales tax thing to pass, what do you think is going to happen with the Browns? The, the question that every... Okay. The biggest thing for the fans is dome versus not a dome, Right? knowing that the best outcome for everybody would be a domed stadium downtown. I just... Can I take it down another path for just a second? And I'm sure that this has come up in conversation with either the city or the Cleveland Browns. Why do you not renovate the stadium for right now and get another... 10 years out of it and see what where we're at in five years to build your dome stadium now people will be bitching and moaning about you're doubling up the price to do a renovation and then also a dome we all know what the best option is a dome in downtown cleveland why do you not if we know if we all agree the city of cleveland the haslams the taxpayers we can all get on board would you say that everybody would get on board with building a dome downtown, then why don't you do everything you can to keep that dream alive? Keep the stadium the way that it is, maybe even do a smaller renovation. And well, Matt, what would change in five years? I don't know. I have no idea. You can't build land. You can't just go out into the lake. I get it. But in five years and more time, I, maybe that doesn't solve anything. Maybe that's it. But we talk about the post office land, right? We talk about land south of the highway. Is there anything over by 77? I, I have no idea. I really, And I'm assuming that the Browns and the Haslams and everybody, for as smart as they are, they're trying to get this all figured out. Maybe buy yourself a little time. Maybe that's an idea. I, I, I don't know. But it's as you see other teams... That, are, that frankly shouldn't be struggling. Would you not think the Chiefs have done everything that they could to instantly, oh yeah, just stay sure, yeah, get whatever you want. And they're struggling? Just as a reminder, this is not going to be as easy as you think it's going to be. As much as we're going to complain about it, as much as we're going to worry about it, it's not quite as easy as, it's, as we all would hope it to be. We'll see how it plays out. Well, you want to get a little nuts, Matt, here in the last thing of the morning update? Yeah, sure, absolutely. I always love it. All right. Well, Bronny James is entering the transfer ah, portal announced yesterday. Up. Yes, the two yes, favorite yes, yes, landing yes, yes. spots, I believe, are favored to be one, Ohio State, mm -hmm. and Duquesne. Mm -hmm. We all know the Keith Danbrot and now Drew Joyce Drew connection, Joyce connection. there in Duquesne. My biggest thing is that tells you he's not going to the NBA next year. So then that delays LeBron's plan. And I, I tweeted this before anybody tells me about Bronny's draft stock. And all, I, I get it. I really thought he would just go, maybe be a UDFA, undrafted free agent, and sign wherever LeBron was at, just to make that dream come true. 
But if he's talking transfer portal, that means he wants to play another I think that would be very selfish to Bronny. Oh, to force him to leave and then come to the NBA? Yeah, I guess. I mean, the thing is, it's like selfish to a point, but also like, it, would not Bronny be good enough to be on a team? And I guess LeBron's dream is that he doesn't have his son on a two-way G League contract. You know, like he actually wants him to be a rotational type of player. And there's all that discussion, man, about LeBron has fully admitted he regrets naming him after him, like the pressure that is undue onto him because he's LeBron James' son and all that kind of stuff. I get it. I get it. And then I also I saw I just saw the report that, that people feel like LeBron's only got why I don't know it's, you're gonna make you laugh because you're like, of course it's obvious. He's only got one or two years left. Right? If that's his goal, if that's his uh, dream of playing it out, well, you only got one more year potentially to play alongside your son. If that is his goal, he's crossed everything off, off on his career. How can he not want to do it? Right? How could that not be the one thing that's left on his bucket list? It's just weird that he's that opportunity was there. LeBron to Cleveland? No. No, no, I'm just, I'm just messing no up. not that. It's Bronny being able to join him really wherever he wants. No, I'm just to. saying you're buying into this connection here. Bron Bronny, maybe LeBron. Cleveland? What's that got to do with anything? He wants to see his son play another year. Yeah, what's that have to I do guess with him coming back to the Cavs? I don't know, because it'd be fun, and I want LeBron back. He's not coming maybe back. Maybe that's why. He's not coming back. He, he they, you want to know the other part of the article that I read about one to two years left is that he's going to retire a Lake. Okay, mm we'll see about that. I will bet you whatever you want to bet that he will finish his career with the LA Lakers. Your house? You can have it, man. All right, but you don't get anything in return. That's fine. You can have my house. Yeah, you can have it. You can absolutely have it. All right, let's get to it. Immaculate grid. Here we go. Our statistical category plays right. No colleges today. Uh, Super Bowl champion. All right, you ready? Yeah. You ready? Stopwatch, go. Uh, Nine minutes just, we got to do. Yeah, go. just rip Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. Wait, what are the no, other two teams? it doesn't matter. Okay, it's it doesn't insane. Matter. All right, that's fine. Uh, L.A. Rams, Matt Jared Stafford, Goff. Derek Goff. Well, no, no, Super Bowl champion. Goff oh, didn't right. win. Yeah, Stafford. Stafford. And we can do, want to do Steve Young. Steve Young. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Didn't he play for Chiefs? No, Joe Montana. I'm thinking did. Joe Montana. Joe Montana. So, so put Steve, Steve Young. Young there and then put Joe Montana over there. All right, Joe Montana, Chiefs, done. 49ers Saints is an interesting one. 49ers Saints. Did Ted Ginn play for the Niners? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're pretty sure. I'm pretty sure, yeah. I, I feel pretty semi-confident in that. Go ahead, let it rip. Remember, we talked Hi. about our, our resolution here to do the grid was just starting to let things get ripped I'll be, I'll be here. Saudi. I think he's good. I think you're good. Yes. Got to have that confidence, baby. All right, four left here. Rams, Chiefs. Broncos Chiefs. Focus on one. Okay. Well, so I'm, I'm focusing maybe on the Chiefs here. Do you want to run through the Chiefs here? Yeah. Chiefs Broncos. Am I tripping? Or did Emmanuel Sanders play for the Saints? No, nah, I think that I'll listen to that. Maybe let's let's hold on. Alright, Emmanuel Sanders there. Broncos Chiefs, I keep going back to alignment. Like, but no, Quinn Miran's still there. Like, Nick Allegretti was still with the Chiefs. There's got to be some historic players, too, right? Running backs, Philip Lindsley, no. Um, gosh darn it, man. All right, let's go down to the Rams. Rams, Chiefs. Any quarterbacks? We're missing quarterbacks in this, I think. McCown played for the Chiefs. Josh McCown. But I don't think he ever played for the Broncos or the Rams. Um, Will Lutz? Kicker? Chiefs? Or no, Saints. Saints. Did he not kick for the Broncos? I don't know. I don't know. Going slapping us in the face as it always. Rams, Chiefs. I right, just rip Emmanuel Sanders. We got to get back off the Schneid here. All right. I'm not confident, though, man. I yes. uh, got to have a little confidence, man. Got to have a little confidence. All right. Let's go Broncos, Chiefs. Just try to knock that one out. Broncos, 
Chiefs. Tyron Matthew, Chiefs. No, no, didn't play there. Played with the Saints, though. That That's in done. division. So yeah. Not many trades. Not many trades. Um, Josie Jewell? No. I say I also think for some reason the Saints worked there, but no. Um, hmm. I think we're going to have to go back like years, and that's really where we start getting fouled up on this. Broncos, Chiefs. It's going to have to be a backup quarterback. Jake Plummer. Did that ever work? No. Chad Henney. Chad Henney. If we need to rip one, I'd rip that, but I don't know. Let's think Saints, Rams. Saints, Rams? Mark Ingram didn't play for the Rams, did he? I don't think so. I don't think so. Adrian Peterson didn't. No. Jamal Williams? No. No. He just got there. Quarterback Tyrod Taylor? Dude. Tyrod, I, I don't know why. I know he played for the Chargers. Yeah, I'm seeing the Chargers. I feel like he played for the Rams, too. I don't know why. Did Jared Goff play for him? No, he's only played for two teams. No, not Kurt Warner. Obviously, Breeze was Chargers, not the Rams. I don't know. If I need to let it rip, I I kind of like Tyrod Taylor there. For Saints Rams? Yeah. Nope. Sorry. Sorry. Don't even have any other guesses, to be honest yeah. with you. Juwan Johnson, the tight end for the Saints. Did he ever play for the Rams? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't think Will Lutz did. I feel like we've tapped it out here. Uh, Mario Davis or Brown boy? No. No. Jets, Browns, Saints, I think, is where he's been in on that. Quan Alexander. He was in New Orleans. I know he spent a lot of time out there. I don't even know if he ever went to, to the Rams. I have no idea. Yeah, I think we might have to call him it. Man. Tough one. Tough one for us today on the Immaculate Grid. What do we got? All right, where do you want to start? Uh, go Rams. Uh, go Rams, Saints. That's where we were at. Brandon Cooks. Dog. Oh, yeah. We need to remember him. He's kind of a cheat code yeah. on this. Um... I really don't recognize any Steve Walsh. Okay. I really don't recognize Jared Cook. That. I knew there was a tight end. It was Jared Cook. That's a, I don't recognize a lot of I those. knew it was Jared Cook. All right. Who else? Uh, let's go uh, Rams. Uh, Chiefs? Yeah, Rams Chiefs. Trent Green. Okay. Nick Foles. Ron Jaworski. Okay. Uh, yeah, Chalk. Damn, that would have been a good one, too. About it. All right. And then the final one uh, was Chiefs Broncos, if you will, please. Kyle Orton, Jamal Charles. Really? Peyton Hillis. How about that? Kyle, oh, yeah. That, Kyle yeah, Orton. that's right. Damn, uh, that's right. That's right. Hmm. Oh, well, it is what it is. From the Immaculate Grid who never gets solved to one of the biggest mysteries that's never been solved ever, right? Bigfoot. We have multiple witnesses reporting yet another Bigfoot sighting in the state of Washington. According to the BFRO, the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, how do I join the BFRO? There reportedly have been more sightings in one area of Washington. So number one, did you know that Washington is the number one Bigfoot sighting state in the country. Can't say I did. 17, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 717 different reports have been taken in the state of Washington. Do you know the next closest state at 461? So there's a wide gap. 717 in Washington. I'm going to assume it's has... geographically close. Sure. 461 for this next state. Well, if it's if it's geographically close, Oregon, 
No, good guess, though. California? California is correct. Okay. Apparently, in Thurston County, on a clear day in February, multiple people reported in a detailed encounter with a Bigfoot. One witness explained, my friend and I and my three-and-a-half-year-old son, a very credible Wait, Matt, witness. I got to stop you real quick. What? It said a Bigfoot, so there's multiple? Big feet? Well, yeah, I'm assuming there has to be multiple Bigfoot. It can't just be one that he lives thousands or hundreds of years. Maybe it's got to be a family. Extinct. I don't know. He's I don't know. Survivor. According to a witness in the case, my friend and I and my three and a half year old son, very credible witness, were riding motorcycles in a private timberland just out of Centralia, about 30 minutes from my house. We made it to a clearing. My son was sitting on the front of my bike. He started pointing across to a ridgeline clearing. And he was pointing at something running across the ridgetop. We were roughly a half mile away and a few hundred feet lower, lower. And it looked to be a very large human shape running on this ridgeline. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> there was one color, tan and brown, moving across very rugged terrain, making a beeline to the tree line. We watched it for easily 30 seconds before it went out of sight. Another witness adding it seemed to be at least 10 feet tall with little arm movement, unlike a human running. So imagine like somebody's running like this. Yeah. Okay. Accor <laughs> How do I get this job? According to the BFRO, the Bigfoot Researchers Organization investigator, Scott Taylor. That's got to be a non-paid job. I wonder what it, uh, what it costs. BFRO investigator. Uh, salary. Has to be a hobby. No. No. This, no. No, 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 no. This cannot be right. I went to salary.com. Take that for what it's worth. I have no idea. The Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization average annual salary is $106,000 a year. You should be doing that. Bye. Yeah. Enjoy. See you later. Bye. You going back to Baldwin Wallace? Yeah, see you later. I don't even, what, what, what qualifications do I need? I have eyes, Ryan. I'll go out and sit in the woods in North or in, in North in the Northwest. And, an average hourly wage of $51 an hour. I'm not believing that. Come on now. Scott Taylor took to the area where the sighting took place. He said it's well known for Bigfoot sightings in a travel corridor between Capitol Forest and Baldwin. What is the job called? Big, uh, Bigfoot, BFRO, the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization Investigator. There's another one. Huh? His name is Matt Moneymaker. He also spoke with the witness and reported the behavior is known to be moving along power line routes. The time of day is important in that this context, this tall, visible Sasquatch was walking out in the open in broad daylight, but it was doing it where no human usually are, or certainly not to approach them. Moneymaker also stated the witness grew up in the Tacoma area and does a lot of motorcycle trail riding, which has allowed him to explore a lot of backcountry. He's observed large, basically this guy is an outdoorsman. It's not like some city slicker, some city folk going up there going, oh, hey, I saw something big. And they, yeah, they call that a bear. That's a bear. You know what I mean? It, it, whatever. This guy's been in it. The only thing. The only thing. What are you and I both going to say? You couldn't get a cell phone video of it. That's what I'm saying. Like they said they watched this Bigfoot for 30 seconds. Walk off again in the trailer. So the other thing. It likes the power lines because it's all cleared, right? You got to have the brush cleared out from underneath the power lines. So I think that would make sense. And also, if it were a person, they would probably be like, yeah, you know, I probably should get away from these power lines. But they said it looked easily 10 feet tall. How could you tell that from being a, a mile away or half mile away is what they said. Can you repeat BFRO? What is that again? B the Bigfoot Field Research Organization. The BFRO. For a Bigfoot Research 
Wait, Bigfoot no, Bigfoot Find. Field Research. Bigfoot, Bigfoot Field. Field Researchers Organization. I'm on their website right now, bfro.net. They don't even have the dot .com. Um, all right, here's a real interesting one. The state of Washington has 717 sightings of Bigfoot. Second is California with 461. Third <laughs> is Florida with 343. Lay off the bath salts is what I would say. Ryan, would you dare guess who number three in the country is? I'm saying this is for sightings? Yeah. Did I say it already? No. Ohio? Ohio. Yeah. Okay. Like, well, is this 200. Just... I'm sorry. 323 sightings. Last updated last month. Last updated last month. You ever been to Salt Fork, Ohio? State no. Park? Good muskie fishing. My brothers and I usually try to go on a muskie trip every year. Go down to Salt Fork. That is Ohio Bigfoot territory. And I'll tell you, man, you get down there, you believe why there might be something out there that we've never seen. And that's just Ohio. I just put out a tweet from the show asking people if they would take that job. How could you not? Did you find it? Again, from the money. I, according to salary.com. That's what I said. Salary.com. says $106,000 to be a Bigfoot field researcher. So all you do is you go out there, and I'm assuming you're, it, it's twofold, right? You're, it's twofold. Can oh, wait, wait, let me ask you this. Is there an Ohio branch? Has the has the fourth most sightings in the country per B what is it? B what did I say? B F R O. Can I get an Ohio? Seriously, if we have the fourth most, is there is, is there an Ohio outlet for this? There has to be. There has to be. There was a sighting. Oh, my God. They have classes of sighting. The most recent sighting was in Carroll County, 16 miles east of New Philadelphia. A class A sighting. My name is... Be Seriously. My name is Betty Russell. I live in Carroll County, Ohio. I was driving home on February 6th of 2024. It was about 8.30 p.m. It was very dark. No street lights were in the country. I was going west on Autumn Road when I just crested the top of the hill. And there it was in the middle of the road. It was a very large bipedal bean. Long, wavy hair. There were leaves and possibly small twigs in its backside. It had very broad shoulders, brown in color. It took one step to the guardrail with its right leg. It was over the guardrail with its left, and then it was gone. Here's how th this is uh, literally the, the questionnaire that Betty filled out from Carroll County. Have you had other encounters? And she goes, yes. Bruh. Farm pastures and thick forest. Oh. There is an Ohio outlet. James Thompson is our guy. Let's get James him Thompson is Should the we get B him on the show? It, it, I'm serious. James Thompson is the BFRO investigator in Ohio. He followed up on this. He writes, I met with the witness 16 hours after the sighting occurred. The sighting took place on a very hilly, rural Ridgeline Road. Her car crested, turned left. As the car's headlights came down, they illuminated a tall brown bipedal creature in the middle of the road. Due to the dangerous decline curve on the road, she was only able to see it for a split second before it disappeared over the guardrail. The creature did not turn to look at the vehicle. I would let her, uh, let her, uh, blah, blah, blah. I would later range the distance at about 65 yards. His other observation, the area had experienced a very mild winter, so there's not been any precipitation last week with highs, uh, temperatures in the high 40s to 50s, brush cut low, maybe a chance for them to be on the move. I was not able to find any indication of prints or travel material anywhere around the area. I climbed the guardrail and jumped into the grassy area only to have it spring back after I moved, showing no indication of the move that I just made. So what this investigator is saying is if the Bigfoot went over there, 
there's no way the grass would have been moved. It, what he's saying is, I stepped over the guardrail, and you couldn't tell that I was there. So, therefore, there's a chance that this could be a Bigfoot. Both sides of the road were very steep and had multiple game trails. Ground was solid, so I could not find any evidence of any animal moving in the area. I returned to my vehicle, made an approach like the witness did, and I noticed a berm. I crested on the hill at the downward angle, noticing a view of the road beyond. It's a very remote area. Part of the Muskingum Watershed Conservatory District that includes lakes such as Salt Fork, Clendenning, and Tappan, less than a mile away. Deep hollers, high ridge lines, low population is very typical for this part of eastern Ohio. <laughs> Do you want to know the final thing yeah. that the BFR Ohio investigator James Thompson says? I found this witness very credible, along with the story she's told me of family members and the history of other reports in the area. I guess he goes by Jim. Oh, he does? Did you find him? I'm trying to find his, like, so I'm going to get him on the show. I'd love to talk to him. Then Matt Moneymaker follows up as the other investigator on this. They've got a pin down by Philadelphia, New Comerstown, Minerva. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How do I find this guy's info? I don't know. Try LinkedIn. All right. Oh, my God. They have pictures of the hill. Look at this. I don't know, man. That's pretty steep. That's a pretty steep road. I'd, I'd, I'd fall. Again, I'm not a Bigfoot. Here we go. I got Jim right here. I got him right here. You found his info? Yeah. Served as a Marine Corps helicopter uh, uh, engine yeah, but mechanic. Tell me improved. how to reach him. Oh, yeah. Just go to contact us at BFRO.net. Email him. Seriously. Send any comments or inquiries or reports to contact us at BFRO.net. Here, you want an explanation of the classification systems for finding a, a Bigfoot? Yeah. So there are class A, B, and C of reporting of the system, okay? Class A, a clear sighting in circumstances where misrepresentation or misidentifications can be instantly ruled out with great confidence. Class A is I saw it, it's not a bear. I saw it, it's not a giant beaver, okay? I saw it, I know what it is. These are, uh, for example, there are several footprint cases that are well documented. These are considered class A reports because misidentification of common animals can be confidently ruled out. Thus, a potential for misinterpretation is very low. That is class A sighting. That is what our friend Betty okay. in Carroll County had. She had a class A. I saw the damn thing. It was in the middle of the road. It's nothing else, right? It's not my weird neighbor who likes to go on naked walks, okay? It's not that. All right. Class B of Sasquatch sightings is a possible where it was observed at a great distance or in poor lighting conditions, which aren't they all. And incidents in other circumstances cannot afford a clear view. For example, credible reports where nothing was seen in distinct or characteristic sounds of Sasquatches. I didn't know if there were were not heard can also be considered class B reports and never class A. Even the most compelling sound-only cases, because there's a lack of a visual element, raises a greater potential for misidentification. They're saying, if you heard something and you didn't see it, that's class B. You okay. heard something and you go, there's no way that that's a deer. That's no way that that's anything else that I've ever heard in my life. It's not some weird bird. It's a Sasquatch, but I didn't see it. That's a class B. Class B reports are considered less credible for, obviously, than Class A. Um... Almost all reports, including the dad pays, are first-hand reports. Occasionally, there is a second-hand report that is considered reliable enough, but they must be classified as Class B. So if you saw a Sasquatch and you told me the story and I reported to the BFRO, that's got to be Class B. Okay, It's got to be Class B. Final one is Class C, which includes most second- and third-hand stories or untraceable sources. There's a high potential for inaccuracy here. Those reports are kept in the BFRO archives, but are rarely listed publicly in this database. Exceptions are locally documented incidents, such as 1958 when the word Bigfoot first entered the American vocabulary and sightings mentioned in non-tabloid newspapers or magazines. 
So if the Medina County Gazette picked up a story that somebody saw Bigfoot, they would put it in here as a Class C. If you've encountered a report that you feel like has been misclassified, please co- fill out our comment form. <laughs> People take this seriously. <laughs> oh, I know. No, I know. I used to work with Casey over at KNR. Casey really into the paranoia, uh, not pa- paranoia, paranormal, mm-hmm. but he also loves Bigfoot. Frequently asked questions. Are you interested? Sure. Oh, Ryan, do you know what question number two is that we all want to know? How do I become a member of the BFRO? Absolutely. See, they've seen those checks they're handing out. And the link is dead. There's nothing I can click on with that. Do Bigfoot bury their dead? It's been discussed in the BFRO community for a long time and in general. Next, how do I become a member of the BFRO? Damn it, the link is broken, man. I want to know. Are they dangerous? I would assume yes. There are literally thousands of credible eyewitness accounts of Sasquatch sightings. Most of them from at least 100. That's my other thing. On all these reports, why isn't it that they were three feet away from me? Or I tripped over them or something like that. They were asleep. Sasquatch was taking a nap and I tripped over him and I saw him. There are no, of course, there are no modern reports of humans either being killed or injured by a Sasquatch. I would hope not. So, you know, the ultimate question about Sasquatch, Ryan, if you saw one, would you kill it? Because if you killed it, are you really emailing the BFRO right now? Yeah. Okay. I'm just wondering. If you killed the Sasquatch, you would have undeniable proof that they exist. You'd probably get on the cover of People Magazine. You'd have all these interviews. But you would also then be killing an animal that probably does not have a lot of, it's probably near extinction, right? If they were flying around, they were everywhere, we would see them by now. So the ultimate question is, if you saw Sasquatch, you had a gun in your hand, would you shoot him? Uh, No. Okay, so then you, you will never have the you know unequivocal proof that you saw Sasquatch I would have it for myself and that would be enough you know yeah but don't you want to make a lot of money off of it don't you want to say you were the guy that actually proved that there was Sasquatch I don't think it's worth killing an innocent thing that might be leading to extinction like no isn't that part of the best part of Bigfoot is nobody really knows I want to know because imagine this imagine you prove there is Sasquatches then people really, and I guess it'd be disturbing them because then people would really be on the hunt because you'd prove like, yeah, they're actually out there. Let's get after it here. Let's go find them. Let's go find them. I want to know, how do we become a member of the PFRO? Well, I just emailed Jim. Did you? Did so, you get a hold of him? We'll see. Hey, departments. Um, submit an article. I just want to know, here's the reporting form. What was seen, heard, or found? When did the incident occur? Where did it occur? What was the environment like? Were there other witnesses? Is there anything else noteworthy? How may we contact you? Submit the report. Submit the report. The Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization. How do they make money? I wonder. Is this a nonprofit? How does this work? It's got to be, man. How does this work? Let's see if a billionaire funder that really wants to know. Oh, I'm sure. Have you heard these sounds before? These apparently are the sounds of juve. Do you want to hear it? Hang on. I'm going to turn this way up. It's as loud as it goes. Damn it. I have juvenile Sasquatch sounds from northern Georgia. Like a child Bigfoot? I guess, yeah. It's just like this loud, like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And then they also have sounds of other animals. They're like, don't confuse it with this. It's not this. This is Sasquatch. It's out there, man. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. They're out there. I want to get Matt Moneymaker on. He's got everything here, man. Sound recordings, reports recently added. Um... Wood, Texas, Wood County, Texas, March, March 1st. Is it's what? Been, that the most recent sighting. Oh, okay. Of any this uh, year? Yeah, of this year. Yep. I've got one from 2021 out of Claremont County. I mentioned the one from Carroll County last month. There you go. Um 
Pierce County, Washington, Polk County, Iowa, San Juan County, Utah, Aroostock County, Maine. Multiple family members mentioned multiple incidents on isolated property near the Canadian border. Do you think the Sasquatch is Canadian? I don't know. Hey, maybe. He's Canadian. Do, do, will we adopt him as our own? Yeah, the American? Cool. Is he Canadian? I'm all in this, man. I'm all in. I hope this guy responds. I'd love to have him on. We stumbled into Bigfoot. Multiple sightings. You want to get to time hop? You want to get to that? You want to go right into it? Yeah, we should probably do it. All right, let's do a time hop quick. Here we go. All right, let's get to it. Uh, 3rd of April, we are into... Let's get going. This day, 2019, Greg Popovich set an NBA record. He was ejected 63 seconds into a game. That's pop for you. That's a pretty good record I would like to have. Uh, This day, 2018, Charlie Casserly with a mock draft. Now, let's not forget, the Browns had one and four in that draft. Do you know his mock? Sam Darnold won. Bradley Chubb at four, and we trade up to take Sony Michelle at 32. You know, alternate universe. A universe I don't want to live in. I wanted Chubb Denzel, and I'd even take Baker in that one. That's not a universe I would want to live in, but it is what it is. Uh, this day, 1998, Michael Jordan scored his 29,000th point, joining Wilt and Kareem as the only players to do that. You know how many players have passed 29,000 since? Honestly, I don't think that many. All right, so again, Jordan did it this day, 1998. It's 29,000 points. He joins Wilt and Kareem. Since then, there have been one, two... Well, that can't be right. That can't be right. 29,000? I guess this guy would be... Okay, fine. Um, One, two... Three, four players have joined that mark since. So, and what was that date? Twenty nine. Uh, tw- uh, I'm sorry, 1998. Four players. Four players. Okay. You want me to guess them? Yeah, if you want. Kevin Durant. No, he's close. Really? He needs 300 more. 300 more. And maybe that maybe ESPN hasn't updated it, but oh, he's got to be close. Dirk. Dirk. Um, did Tim Duncan? No. You're missing the easy one. Missing the easy one. Yeah. Who's joined the 29,000-point club? Who's joined the 40,000-point club? Oh, I thought we just automatically include LeBron. Oh, I didn't know you included. Okay, so LeBron and Dirk. There's two more. Um, Mello? No. Good guess, though. Steph ain't there yet. Nope. Mm. All right, we got to fly because we're really... Kobe? Oh, duh. But then they have Carl Malone on here. So wouldn't Carl Malone have already had that? Maybe By not. 1998? Maybe not. I don't oh, know. You would think. You would think. So, again, top like 29,000. Here are all the players in NBA history. There's only seven. Will, Dirk, Jordan, Kobe, Karl Malone, Kareem, and LeBron. Those are the only ones to score 29,000. Uh, Kevin Durant will very, very soon. He's at 28,559, so he's very close. Harden has 25,000. Russell Westbrook has also 25,000. I don't know where Steph is on that list. But anyway, we'll get to him coming up. Uh, This day, 1996. One of the most lopsided games in NCAA history happened in baseball. St. Francis College beat Robert Morris 71 to 1. They had innings of 26, 22, 4, and 19 runs in the first four innings. In the process of doing that, they set 70 NCAA single game records when they beat Robert Morris 71 to 7. Oh, no, they do in the sixth inning, but they got to get there still. Good Lord. Don't you just start bunting at that point? When you hit 50, don't you just start bunting? Something. I don't know. That's that's no good. One of the greatest ever do it. Talking about baseball this day, 1989. The kid, Ken Griffey Jr., made his major league debut. Sweetest of swings, man. Junior was a man. He was so good. Um, This day, 1987, Dr. J got his number 32 retired by the Nets. He already had number six retired by the 76ers. This day, 1973, the first ever mobile telephone call was made. An employee of Motorola called AT&T. What do you call it? (laughs) Is your refrigerator (laughs) 
Why would you call an a like? Why would you call Motorola? Why would you call AT and T? Control. Hey, down. is your your refrigerator run? Well, you better go catch. What do you do? What do you do? You just call to. I guess that's weird. It's the first ever mobile telephone call this day, 1973. This day, uh, you don't even know about these. Do you remember when the TV Guide was actually published, Ryan? You don't even know the channel, do you? No, I mean, I remember the TV Guide. 53. This day, 1953, the first ever television TV Guide was published. Do you remember? You don't remember the the, 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 the channel, do you? Sure I do. Do you? Yeah. All right. You miss what you're trying to watch. You got to wait for it to yeah, come back around again. Oh, yeah. TV Guide channel. Uh, and also, this day, 1860, the Pony Express debut. Nice. There you go. Benjamin Franklin, right? Uh, no, he was long gone by then. What year was it? Was it 1860 for the Pony Express? Oh, but I, he was. He I think he the had postal. the. I, he invested the post office. Yeah. I think he was the first ever postmaster general yeah, okay. or something like that. Back then, it was just people like walking and stuff. Yeah. Pony Express, 1860. All right, very happy birthday goes out to former Browns player Mike Pruitt, Michael Olawakandi, Jared Allen, Jason Kipnis, Jay Bruce, Cam Chancellor, Jamal Williams. Just mentioned him earlier on the show, which is weird. Uh, what a list on the non-sports side. Eddie Murphy, Alec Baldwin, Jane Goodall, Kobe Smulders, Marlon Brando, and Adam Scott. I just always think of him in Parks and Rec. Yeah. Ben Wyatt. I'm sure I know he's done a lot of other, that and the jackass brother in um in Step Brothers. Step Brothers he plays a yeah. great mean older brother in that one. All right, movies and television shows. I start with one that we got yesterday. 19 Remember I said Space Odyssey was yeah. yep. premiered yesterday, but it hit theaters this day 68. So we'll go beyond that. One. All right, couple for you. Starting this day 2004, an animated television show. Remember when I said I couldn't remember the guy that got struck by lightning and got special powers? Yeah, yeah. It might have been this television show. Okay. Um, I mentioned the paranormal. It has a little to do with that. 2004. The movie? TV show. TV, TV show? show. Animated TV show. Oh, um, oh, I know. I, is it the... He rides on like a hoverboard? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think he's got a hoverboard, yeah. I don't remember what it's called. Danny Phantom? Oh, is that what you were thinking of? Danny Phantom was in like a reactor. No, that's no. not what I was. Oh, thinking. I didn't know. I did. I love Danny Phantom. Yeah. So I misled you on the on the clues. Yes. I'm sorry. Danny Phantom came out this day, 2004. All right. Next up, uh, film that came out this day, 1992. A suburban family. American Beauty. No. Adopts a new pet that leads them. To be included in a crime syndicate. And eventually they foil the plans of said crime syndicate. A suburban family adopts a dog. Okay. The dog somehow gets them into a crime syndicate type of thing. And they have to get their way out. And they do by foiling. Spawn several sequels. In the second one, this dog eventually finds his lady friend. They have a bunch of puppies. Named after a very famous composer. Okay, that was gonna say Beethoven. Yeah, I Beethoven. Sure. I've, I've never I love seen Beethoven. It, so I, didn't know, I didn't know the plot Beethoven's a good flick, man. Beethoven's a good flick. This day, 1992. What a cat. Bonnie Hunt, Charles Gro. Good flick. Beethoven, this day, 1992. All right, you got Space Odyssey in 1990, uh, 1968. Here's your trivia of the day. Final movie for us also came out this day, 1968. So we had 2001 A Space Odyssey. And this film, which premiered, also, very extraterrestrial, very science fiction-y, and your hint is this movie has been rebooted within the last 10 years and has spawned several sequels of said reboot, including yet another one that I think is coming out this year. This year? Yeah. Alien? No, good guess, though. Does that have to do with Aliens? Wouldn't say aliens per se. No, no. The reboot. Oh, Ghostbusters. No, no. no good call though. But the reboot takes away the alien factor of it. not alien factor. The the original movie was this astronaut goes off and he finds himself on this distant planet, and he comes to find the the inhabitants of this planet are who? I already gave you a hint when I said planet. Planet of the Apes? That is correct. Oh, okay. That is correct. The Planet of the Apes. Because, again, in that one, 
he flies off. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. In that one, he flies off and he finds the planet of the apes. Okay. The remade ones, they started with James Franco. It's like that our planet is getting taken that, okay, over see, by the I apes. I thought that was the only one. Oh, no, no. It was originally. Not. There were multiple of that in 1960. Okay, okay. I think there was a return of the planet of the apes, all that kind of stuff back in the there's day. There's a new one coming out. Yeah. Know. Oh, there's a ton of them coming out now. Can't say. I watched the first one. I'm out. I haven't seen it. I'm out. I, I don't know. I, I'm out. I don't like why. I know they're fake. I don't want to see them die. I know. It's I watched that other. I watched the second Jurassic Park of the new ones, and they're getting off the island while the volcano's exploding. Yeah, Matt. I know they're CGI. I'm not an idiot, but I don't want to watch that. I don't want to watch some poor Stegosaurus getting, you know, covered in lava. Get out of here. I hate it. Didn't like it. You know what I don't hate, Ryan? Our booze calves. Let's go. Wine and gold tonight, baby. Three legs. What do we got? Number one, Donovan Mitchell. Points, rebounds, assists. 31 and a half, if I'm not mistaken, is what we got there on a boost. Uh, plus 732. No, I'm saying uh, Donovan Mitchell. Points, rebounds, oh, assists. 31 and a half. That's right. 31 and a half. I just need one Evan Mobley, three, and the Cavs to cover that five and a half. Ryan said they were boosted up to a healthy over 700. Let's go. Little rivalry between Dan Gilbert, Matt Ishbia. Get that down to the team. Just cover that. Just cover that, Cavs. I would say of the legs I don't like, it's the cover. Okay. I can't tell on this team, man. They show up some nights and they don't. Get betting with Tipico, folks. Download that app. Use that code FONTANA100 when you sign up. Deposit and bet $25 on whatever you want. With that code, $100 in bonus bets. Going to hit your account as soon as that game wraps up. Terms and conditions apply. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Check out Tipico. We also have more NCAA tournament content coming out, I think, later today. Okay. Uh, Karan Butler and crew, we sat down. We shot some of that yesterday, so I think that's coming out real soon. Tipico's going, dude. Baseball, I'm geared up. Guardians, 4 o'clock this afternoon. I'm excited for that. Yeah. So we'll get a Guardians bet in with Tipico. Of course, uh, basketball playoffs before we know it. Getting ready to go for the Final Four. Is it weird that I think this is, and, and pardon the pun, uh, this is an absolute straight layup that this is going to be Purdue and UConn? Alabama ain't doing it. And neither is NC State. I mean, I don't think Alabama stands a chance. Oh, I don't think Alabama. You want to? I, I pulled this up yesterday for for our content shoot. Alabama is only three and six straight up this year as a dog, and this is their first game as a double digit dog. Now, nah. toast. Now, nah. NC State. The only prayer that they really have is that they get some of those big guys that they have. Not even DJ Burns, but that uh, Diaria. If he can get after Zach Eady a little bit. I think we're on a collision course for UConn and Purdue, which will be a fun game to watch. I'd still go you Purdue. See people or want UConn. DJ Burns to. Play I the saw NFL that. I, I mean, listen. I see a lot of talented guys. They got rugby players and all that. Football's a different sport when you've never been hit before. Rugby's different. You want to talk about somebody like that, Jordan Maliata. Remember him? He's the offensive lineman for the Eagles, right? Mm-hmm. Six eight, whatever. That's different. You played a sport you've never been hit before. It's a little different. All right, we got a break. We got to fly. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, Thursday edition. Don't forget, Drennan coming up a little bit later today on Big Play. Vote on our bracket at Matt Fontana Show for the best bar in Cleveland. We're joining you on a Thursday edition. For Ryan Tyler, I'm Matt Fontana as always. Take it easy.